Welcome everyone to Snooze with Sam. I trust you're all well and looking forward to this month's patron only story. Although this month the story is a little different because I'd like to share with you some poetry. Now, Scotland, with its mountains and hills and braes and bonny banks, has inspired poets, whether Scottish or otherwise, for many, many centuries. So, what I'd like to do is share with you a selection of some of my favourite poems about the country of Scotland. Of course this is just a small selection of pieces that I've come across over the years. Some are old, some are new. Some use the language of Scots. Some represent dialects of Orkney in the Shetland Islands and others are much more legible to the modern English speaker. Although I do hope you'll be patient with me as some of the words used are even difficult for me. If you've ever seen the language of Scots written down Not only is it quite the mouthful, but also the eyeful. To the unfamiliar eye, it bears very little resemblance to English as we know it today. Of course, a small selection of poems can never hope to tell the whole story. However, I hope you will enjoy this small selection. So, as always, lie back, take a deep breath, and enjoy these wonderful pieces of literature. The first poem is called Sonnet in Orkney, and it's by William Fowler. William Fowler was a Scottish poet, or macker, a royal bard as they were called as well. Effectively, a national poet, one who was called upon at the time as a, a national symbol almost an official poet. He was born in 1560 and died in 1612. And he penned this early sonnet in the Scots dialect about the Orkney Islands. Of course, Scottish poetry goes back even earlier than Fowler But this is one of the first great poems about the country of Scotland. I hope you will enjoy this. Sonnet in Orkney by William Fowler. A 
upon the utmost corners of the world and on the borders of this massive round. Queer fates and fortune hither has me hurled. I do deplore my griefs upon this ground, and seeing roaring seas from the rocks rebound, by ebbs and streams of contrary rooting tides, and Phoebus chariot in their waves lie drowned, where equally now night and day divides. I call to mind the storms my thoughts abide. Which ever wax and never does decress, for nights of doyle days, boys, I ever hide. And in their veil, all me well suppress. So this I see, quaher ever I remove, I change what I see but cannot change my love. No pick of the best poems about Scotland would be complete without a poem from Scotland's national poet, Robert Burns, of course. Robert Burns lived from 1759 until 1796 and many of the places he once lived can still be visited these days. Places such as Alloway near Ayr was a very famous thatched cottage in which he lived for many years of his younger days. and then also a house on a winding street in Dumfries where him and his wife spent his later years for him then to be buried in the kirk across the road. As with many Burns poems, this one is technically a song designed to be sung to accompany music to an old Gaelic tune, for example. So this is My Hearts in the Highlands by Robert Burns. My Hearts in the Highlands My Heart is not here My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer. Chasing the wild deer and following the roe. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. Farewell to the highlands. Farewell to the north, the birthplace of valour, the country of worth. Wherever I wander, wherever I rove, the hills of the highlands, forever I love. 
farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the straths and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands. My heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands are chasing the deer. Chasing the wild deer and following the roe. My heart is in the highlands wherever I go. The next poem is called To Ailsa Rock and it's by a poet called John Keats. Keats, 1795 to 1821, wrote many sonnets. And To Ailsa Rock is not one of his most famous. However, it is a cracking poem about Ilsa Craig, an island in the outer Firth of Clyde, which Keats saw firsthand during his long walking tour from Scotland, which he did in the summer of 1818. So once again, this is To Ilsa Rock by John Keats. Hearken, thou craggy ocean pyramid. Give answer from thy voice. The sea fowl screams. When were thy shoulders mantled in huge streams? When from the sun was thy broad forehead hid? How long is it since the mighty power bid? Thee have to airy sleep from fathom dreams. Sleep in the lap of thunder or sunbeams. Or when grey clouds are they cold coverlet? Thou answerest not, for thou art dead asleep. Thy life is but two dead eternities. The last in air, the former in the deep. First with the whales, last with the eagle sky. Drowned wast thou till an earthquake made thee steep. Another cannot wake thy giant size. A 
Our next poem is One Called Glasgow and it's by Alexander Smith. Now Alexander Smith, whose time was between 1829 and 1867, was a member of the spasmodic school of poetry. And he spent his life in the city of Glasgow. A fact he mentions in this poem. The poets have sung of cottages and countryside, Smith tells us, but he wants to sing of something different. I quote, I know the tragic hearts of towns. Smith doesn't shy away from the gloom and dread of the Scottish city. A very typical depiction of those times. Glasgow and any major city in the UK really. It was not a particularly nice place to be. Full of poverty and disease. But nevertheless, he recognises the reality of the modern city as a fit subject for poetry during the mid-19th century. It was a period of mass industrialization. So this poem by Alexander Smith is simply called Glasgow. Sing Poet, tis a merry world. That cottage smoke is rolled and curled. In sport, that every moss is happy. Every inch of soil before me runs a road of toil with my grave cut across. Sing, trailing showers and breezy downs, I know the tragic hearts of towns. City, I am a true son of thine, Never dwelt, and where great mornings shine around the bleating pens. Never by the rivulets I strayed. And never upon my childhood weighed the silence of the glens. Instead of shores, and where ocean beats, I hear the ebb and flow of streets. A far one summer I was born, through golden vapours of the morn. I heard the hills of sheep. I trod with a wild ecstasy the bright fringe of the living sea. And on a ruined keep I sat and watched an endless plain blacken beneath the gloom of the rain. O oh, fair the lightly sprinkled ways, O'er which a laughing shower was raised. O oh, fair the April shoots, O oh, fair the woods on summer days, While a blue hyacinth haze is dreaming round the roots. 
in thee, O city, I discern another beauty, sad and stern. Draw thy fierce streams of blinding ore, smite on a thousand anvils roar, down to the harbour bars, smoulder in smoky sunsets, flare on rainy nights, while street and square lie empty to the stars. From terrace proud to alley base, I know thee as my mother's face. When sunset bathes thee in his gold, in wreaths of bronze thy sides are rolled. Thy smoke is dusty fire, and from the glory round thee poured a sunbeam like an angel's sword shivers upon a spire. Thus have I watched thee, terror, dream, while the blue night crept up the stream. But all these sights and sounds are strange. Then wherefore from thee should I range? Thou hast my kith and kin, my childhood, youth, and manhood brave. Thou hast that unforgotten grave within thy central den. A sacredness of love and death dwells in thy noise and smoky breath. The next poem we have is a piece written by Gerard Manley Hopkins and it's called Inversned. Now, Hopkins visited Inversned, which is located on the east bank of Loch Lomond in Scotland. It's a very remote place, it's even to this day, it takes a bit of planning to get to. It truly is one of the hidden gems, somewhere I only even discovered in recent years. And this poem is a product of that trip, evoking the wild and untouched wonders of nature. As we are in the depths of winter, at least in the northern hemisphere, and daylight is scarce and valuable, this is a particularly good one to read if you're planning any seasonal walks and adventures when the frost set in. This is called Inversned by Gerard Manley Hopkins. This darksome burn horseback brown. His rock roll high road roaring down. In coop and in comb the fleece of his foam 
flutes and low to the lake falls home. A wind puff bonnet of fawn froth turns and twindles over the broth of a pool so pitch black, fell frowning. It rounds and rounds, despair to drowning. Degged with dew, dappled with dew, are the groins of the braes that the brook treads through. Wiry heath packs, flitches of fern, and the bead bonny ash that sits over the burn. What would the world be once bereft of wet and of wildness? Let them be left. Oh, let them be left, wildness and wet. Long live the weeds and the wilderness yet. The next poem is perhaps one of the most famous and critically acclaimed from the Scottish poet of the 20th century, Hugh MacDermott. He was born Christopher Murray Grieve and the self-described Anglophone, take that as you will. And he often wrote about his native country. In Scotland, he tells us that it requires great love of a land to be able to read its configuration. So in a very patriotic manner. This is Scotland by Hugh MacDermott. It requires great love of it deeply to read the configuration of a land. Gradually grow conscious of fine shadings, of great meanings in slight symbols. Hear at last the great voice that speaks softly. See the swell and fall upon the flank. The flank of a statue carved out in a whole country's marble. Be like spring, like a hand in a window, moving new and old things carefully to and fro. Moving a fraction of flower here, placing an inch of air there, and without breaking anything.
So I have gathered unto myself all the loose ends of Scotland, and by naming them and accepting them, loving them and identifying myself with them, attempt to express the whole. This next piece is by a very famous poet named Les Lochhead, still a very much celebrated poet today. Between 2011 and 2016, Les Lochhead, who was born in 1947, was the Maka, and that is, that's poor pronunciation, the Maker. It's, it's phonetically spelled Maka, but the Maker, the official poet of Scotland. Basically a sort of Scottish equivalent to the Poet Laureate role. As the poem's two-part title makes clear, this is a love letter to Scotland, which sees the poet reflecting on her various memories of the country. Her memories, as she acknowledges, are too ordinary to be nostalgic. What a lovely turn of phrase. But the poem brilliantly captures the Scottish character and the poet's own childhood memories. So this is a poem by Liz Lochhead and it's called View of Scotland Love Poem. Down on her hands and knees, at ten at night, on Hogmanay. My mother still giving it elbow grease, jiffy waxing the vinylay. This is too ordinary to be nostalgia. On the kitchen table, a newly opened tin of sockeye salmon. Though we do not expect anyone, the slab of black bun, petticoat tails fanned out on bone china. Last year it was very quiet. Mum's got her rollers in with wave set and her well-pressed good dress slack across the candle wick upstairs. Nearly half ten already and her not shifted. If we're to even hope to prosper, this midnight must find us how we would like to be. A new view of Scotland with a dangling calendar is propped under last year's, ready to take its place. Darling, it's thirty years since anybody 
was able to trick me. December 31st into looking into a mirror to see a lassie with as many heads as days in the year and two already since. Familiar strangers at a party. We did not know that we were the happiness we wished each other when the bells went, did we? All over the city, off licenses pull down their shutters. People make for where they want to be, to bring the new year in. In high rises and tenements, sunburst clocks tick on dusted mantel shelves. Everyone puts on their best spread of plenty. For to even hope to prosper this midnight must find us how we would like to be. So, there's a bottle of sickly liqueur among the booze in the alcove. Golden crusts on steak pies, like quilts on a double bed. And this is where we live. There is no time like the present for a kiss.